Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a preview. This one is for Gray Fox Games' newest release called After the Empire, a two to four player game in which you are a liege of a land trying to beat back the constant wave of invaders who are invading your castle. Yeah, and this thing's all gonna be driven by a worker placement game, but like Jeremy just said, everyone's gonna have this cool little castle in front of them that you build, you upgrade, you put mercenaries in there, you put soldiers in there, hoping that you can defend against all of these invaders. As we say with all of these previews, this is in fact a prototype version of the game. Make sure you guys go to the Kickstarter page to see all the final components. Okay, at the start of the game, each player is gonna be given a land board along with four wooden castle walls. And if you look at David's over here, he's got those four pieces. Three of these sides are going to be walls. They're gonna have two pieces of wood built into them. This is very important because each of these cubes along with the walls are considered one hit point. And when the invaders come in, you notice this is a square. These invaders are gonna come in via these cards. They're gonna be attacking the various sides. So you're going to wanna to sort of look at what's going to happen on the board when you can, because some of that will be hidden. And then pump up your defenses on various sides, hoping that you can sort of keep them out of your castle. Also around each side of your castle are gonna be four different farms. It's very important to keep these farms flipped faced down because on the other side, they can be destroyed. At the end of each of the seven different seasons in the game, you're gonna be given food according to however many of these farms are still intact. Those farms are gonna produce the food that in turn is used to keep your soldiers fed through the game. Also, each player is gonna start with a card at the beginning that kind of gives them their own special unique power. They're also gonna have three other cards at the beginning that represent their first three starting buildings. These three starting buildings are your storehouse, your stockpile, and then your barracks. Each of these different buildings, it's gonna have their own separate worker placement spot where you can take your workers in order to do some kind of action. In addition, there are nine other worker placement spots on the board itself. What are you trying to do in this game? Well, at the end of seven rounds, you wanna be the player that has the most wealth in your castle and in order to do so you're going to have to be acquiring gold through the game at the very bottom of this board you're going to see the gold track it all revolves around the gold itself yeah the gold is good because it's your victory points but the downside of gold is the more gold you have the more susceptible you are to the invaders because they're trying to sack your castles to get at that wealth yeah so to start the game each player is going to have three of their workers in front of them they have the opportunity to get two more workers once in the third season and once in the sixth season. And in turn order, according to that initiative card that you picked at the very beginning of the game that gives you a special power, you're going to take your actions in that player order. Now, all you simply do is you take your worker and you go to one of these different locations on the board. A majority of these locations are gonna give you the resources that you need in the game, such as the wood in order to rebuild your wooden walls. It gives you stone that are gonna help you build your stone walls. And then you have a variety of other things like mines and areas where you can hire new soldiers or mercenaries in the game, places where you can buy new building cards and places that you can buy new refugees. Yeah, the refugees are going to be cards that have unique ongoing abilities on them for basically the rest of your game. You're gonna put these out in front of you. There's gonna be a cost that will often include food and gold on them. And then you see over in this corner, there's gold as well. That's gonna be victory points that you'll score at the end of the game. Of course, that's if this refugee is still undamaged. And several of the buildings that we already mentioned have worker placement spots built into them. So it's another place that you can go. Each of these have their own cost as well. Some of them, however, are once per turn use. You simply tap the card, you get to use that ability during that season. And some of them are one-time effects. The moment you buy them, you get some influx of economy into the game. Again, each of these cards that you have not damaged is going to give you gold at the end of the game, plus that ongoing ability. Yeah, and like we said, there's a number of different spaces on the board to collect different resources in order to sort of build up your castle, arm it with men, and that all revolves around your stockpile. This is where you're gonna collect things like the wood, the stone. And like we said, you're gonna be building, you're gonna be upgrading, you're gonna add turrets on the sides and the corners of the castle that will affect more than just one side. And then you're gonna be looking at these invaders here to see where they're coming from because that's what you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration for the next phase. During each round, all the players are gonna place all of their workers onto the board. And once that happens, you're gonna go into the next phase, which is basically the assault on the castle. The very first thing that you have to do is you have to take any soldiers and any mercenaries that you've collected and place them on your walls. Now, soldiers are a little bit different. Anytime they are damaged or hurt in the game, they're gonna go over to your barracks in which you can heal them back. However, mercenaries are a one season use. 
Once they're used, they're gone, and you have to re-get them. You're gonna place your guys on the walls according to this line of cards. At the very beginning of the very first season, you're gonna see one of the different invaders coming into your area. And you're gonna see one of the siege cards, but it's face down. You have no idea where this is going to attack. Now, the sides of these cards are very important. You're not lining them all, all up the same way. When you shuffle these decks, you're actually taking them and shuffling them into different directions because each of the four different cardinal sides is gonna tell you which side of your castle is gonna be attacked according to where you're sitting at the table. Yeah, as you can see on this card right here, I've got it oriented so that the top is showing where the invaders are coming from. If this were down on the board, you're going to look, depending on where you're sitting, at what side of your castle that represents. For me, it's the left side of my castle. For Jeremy, it would be the right side of his castle. And it depends just on where you're sitting. It adds some randomization to the game. At the bottom of the card, you're going to see a couple things. One is these gold values. The gold value is going to be whether or not they're going to even bother with your castle. If you don't have four gold, for instance, on this one, they are not going to even bother trying to invade your castle. And then below that, you're going to see the type and number of warriors or invaders that are going to come to the castle on that side of it. Those invaders can come from one of two different types. You have your standard soldiers, and then you have your archers. And it's important to make sure you're putting the right people on the board because they're gonna have different tokens. They're gonna to affect the gameplay a little bit differently. During the very first round of the game, you're only gonna have one different invader card and then one siege card. But in the second round, you're gonna have one face down here. In the third round, you're gonna have a second face down here. And then from then on, you're gonna have four or three face down cards and one face up card. So you're gonna have a lot more invaders that are gonna possibly come into your castle. Now, if you keep a low gold value, you can possibly try to not be invaded. However, at the end of each of the individual seasons, this threat marker is gonna go up three, meaning that at the end of the first season, no matter where you are on the gold track, you're at least at three gold, and then six, and then nine. So the threat always constantly gets larger and larger. Well, how does combat work? It's actually very simple. Once you've placed all of your guys on the locations where you think people may be attacking you, with the knowledge, the perfect knowledge you have from that first card, you're then gonna go to an archery phase. All of your guys on all the different sides are going to shoot down onto all the different soldiers that have invaded your area. Yeah, and when those soldiers invade the area, you're going to load up your entire player board with all of the cards that have been revealed with all of the soldiers and archers from the invaders. Then you're going to take a look and basically count up the number of soldiers you have on a wall, and you're able to first take that number of archers or soldiers from the invaders. You're also gonna be looking at any of the different turrets that you've built through the game. The turrets are extremely powerful because they not only allow you to shoot in the cardinal direction, but the cardinal direction on each side. So if I had a turret in this location that you see right here, I could shoot this way and this way. Wood turrets are gonna put one damage into each of those adjacent locations. Stone turrets do two damage. So as you build up your castle, you naturally become stronger and stronger and can handle more soldiers in the game. Yeah, and the next thing you're gonna do after the archers have their way with the invaders is the invaders are gonna take a shot at the actual castle itself and do some damage. So, even if you have some soldiers, mercenaries or otherwise up on that wall, the wall needs to be strong enough to withstand the rest of the invaders that are on that side. The invaders that are there are going to do damage to those cubes that are along the top of that wall. We mentioned earlier, the wood walls just have two cubes and the wall itself. The stone walls have five cubes in the wall itself. If all of those are taken away, the wall's going to go away. Your soldiers and mercenaries are going to fall back into the castle and hopefully defend against the invaders that are still there. You're going to go through each of those wall sections in order, and once you're done, you're going to look at any of the invaders that are left over in the center. If you don't have enough soldiers in order to protect your castle, you will become what's called sacked. When you are sacked, you're gonna look at wherever your gold value is at that time. So if I was at 14 gold in this case, there is a red number associated with each of these gold. That's how much you're going to lose. So 14 minus nine takes me all the way back down to five. That's basically the wealth they've stolen from my castle itself. The next thing that's going to happen is I'm gonna look at my refugees and the buildings that I have in front of me. I have to damage one refugee on one building by placing tokens on top of them. I still get to use those for the rest of the game, but the gold value that we talked about that you get at the end of the game is no longer valid. 
You're also going to get two free mercenaries to use in the next round, and you're also going to get one free additional worker to use in the next round to kind of recoup from that damage that you've taken. Yeah, suffice it to say, you don't want to have your castle sacked. Right. You want to keep your gold up. You don't want to have your gold too far down because that threat level is going to pass it right away and your castle is going to be attacked anyway. There are a few details in combat that we sort of glossed over that make it a little bit more interesting. There are some options to move some of your soldiers around once one of the walls have been attacked. So you can kind of approach that part of the game in a bit of a puzzle sort of way because you're going to have some information before they attack, but not all of it. So you're going to want to have some of that flexibility to move those guys around. So you're going to do that for seven rounds. And at the end of the seventh round, you're going to see whoever has the most gold. In addition to possible secret objectives that you've collected through the course of the game. Each player is going to start with one of these and they have the ability to collect more of these through the game. Any of your non-damaged refugees and any of your non-damaged buildings are also going to contribute to that gold. The final thing you're going to score for are for your undamaged farms. Each of them will give you one gold at the end of the game if you're able to repair those through the course of the game. And you're also going to get gold for any of these flags that you've collected. Now you click these flags at the end of combat. If you have the most gold at the end of a combat round and you haven't been sacked. Yeah, this is a worker placement game about building up, hopefully defending, things are going to go wrong, building up again and trying to repair those things and keep doing that over and over and over and hopefully slowly growing that gold over time. So that is After the Empire. It's from Gray Fox Games. If you have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Again, make sure you guys go to the Kickstarter page to see all the final components, and we will check you guys out next time. Bye-bye.